Thank you to our sponsors for today's video, Nokian Tires, Amber, InfiPower, and Star Charge. Nokian Tires is a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made-in-USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. Also, our sponsor Amber offers a modern extended warranty for your Tesla's battery and more without the burden of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Check out the link in the description below to browse their plan options and get started with a free over-the-air diagnostic check. InfiPower is the largest EV charger module provider with over 3 million power modules running reliably worldwide. Their latest G2 collection features ultra-high power density and efficiency for EV charging and energy storage integration. InfiPower, innovation for your power. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage, as well as microgrid solutions. Hello, good morning, and welcome to New York City. Uh, we have been in New York City many times on this channel. I consider it home. And we are talking about a new DC fast charging hub in New York. It's actually been out for a little bit of time. I've been wanting to come here because I've been really confused about some of the claims of Gravity Charging Center. They claimed it was one of the highest power or even the highest power EV charging site in the country. And you know, I always go, what the heck are you even talking about? And I still have never seen someone go in and dive into the equipment that's here. So we have just shown up at random to come get a first-hand look at the EV charging experience and also just look to see how this goes. I don't know what they charge per kilowatt hour. I don't know actually how fast the chargers are, they claim 500 kilowatts, but one thing is for sure, charging an EV in the metropolitan area of New York is such a pain in the butt. We need more hubs like this. Let's get into it. You join me and my friends Drew and Timon here. Timon behind the camera, thank you for filming. And there are two ways to solve the electric car charging problem in dense urban environments, specifically New York. You could take the approach that Flow Charging has done in collaboration with some local utilities and others, and we did a whole video deep dive on this, where they put in level two street lamp or street side charging that people can level two charge their car, six kilowatts or so. But then there's a whole nother side of it where we looked at the Revel Hub, which was a DC fast charging hub, a couple of them around the New York City area where you can go and charge up pretty quickly. And then we saw one open in Manhattan, right in the heart of everything, which is where we are, right outside the Lincoln Tunnel, which is the gravity charging hub. And they claimed 500 kilowatts. I think there's 24 DC fast chargers in here. And to me, that sounds like a really good idea. I like the idea of as much AC charging as possible, put AC charging in every parking garage, but ultimately Uber drivers, people coming to visit New York City and others will need DC fast charging. And it's not like we're in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska. We are in New York City. There's a lot of people coming here, a lot of people bringing their cars here, which means we need a lot of charging infrastructure, a lot of high power DC fast charging in a centralized location, bespoke created for EV charging. So that's what we have here, Gravity Charging Hub. Let's take a look. You can see right over here is the end of the tunnel. And so you basically come out the tunnel and straight into the garage. And at first glance, it looks beautiful, really nice. You've got this wood, a little garden. You've got a shop where an attendant sits 24 seven. And you'll see if you look around all of these cars charging and with some even charge indicators here on the um, DC fast charge dispensers. I don't, we're gonna get into the exact equipment in a little bit, but I wanna walk everyone through the workflow, which is you pull your car in, you take a charging spot here, and then you can see there's a little shop with an attendant off to the left. There's a you know little sign here, and it'll even show like Porsche Taycan charging right there, which is pretty cool which we are charging a Porsche Taycan, but I don't think this is a touch screen. It just happened to work out that way. And um, you plug in first. Actually, I being here for a little bit, I have not seen any EV driver plug in. The attendant plugs you in, which is interesting. And then you, bit, you pay for charging at the end when you're done. 
There's also a QR code just over here that says get paid to charge your EV overnight. So it could be kind of interesting where you can join uh, Smart Charge New York and uh, you can get rewards for charging from midnight to 8 a.m. Because this is middle of the day on a Wednesday right now. It's like 10 a.m. or something like that. And it's full, completely full of Uber drivers, taxi drivers, and they're all driving somehow BZ4Xs. It's like the BZ4X has become the New York City car of choice. And I was talking to the attendant here about it, and he's like, it sucks because, you know, they put in all this high power charging infrastructure and BZ4Xs charge at like one or two kilowatts above 90% and everyone charges to full. So it is really maybe not the best suited solution. Also, I'm a firm believer of New York City taxi companies and others uh, putting in their own charging hubs time. And this is meant to be a public place, but at the end of the day, if you wanna make money to provide charging, you need utilization. You want high power consistently from all the cars, just chugging electrons, and the BZ4X model doesn't help them so much since they bill per kilowatt hour. They're not actually getting that much revenue for the amount of time a car is on the charger. Anyway, that's uh, just an interesting topic we can talk about. If we look here at the actual dispenser, what the heck is going on? Well, you've got your CCS1 handle right here, Huber Sooner cable, nothing abnormal about it or unusual. We have a cable management, if you look up here, that comes down so you can extend into the cars and then that gets pulled up. And then there's a handle holster that that slides into right there. This whole situation is a unique way of working and it's held together with giant zip ties, if I'm honest. <laughs> so I really feel like this place was designed to be photographed well, but maybe not that hardy or sturdy in terms of daily use. So time in, I would love to hear your initial thoughts here. I'll hand this to you as an EV driver now. Congratulations. Yeah, Logan. thank you. Thank you. Um, honestly, yeah, like you said, it looks like it's going to photograph well. It looks like everything's super easy to Photoshop to make it look fantastic. Like the slits in these walls that you can block out people and make it like this wooden stuff on the side here. It blocks it nicely so you don't have to look at the eyesore that's going on in there necessarily. But other than that, it kind of is just like thrown together. It's just a parking garage yeah. with some cables. But it seems to work. I mean, it'd be good if they had some level ones or slower or a little slower than what they have here too for people that are staying for a long time and they charge a little bit more but i also see them uh implementing a 80 percent limit for bz4x to so they could make profit at least and you can see a mustang mach e taxi right here pulling in very cool um let's talk how this place is used for originally in my mind when i heard gravity high power charging hub i thought okay it's going to be for people visiting new york city Clearly, we are the only ones here who don't have a TLC license plate. This is a, a fleet charging hub. Whether it was intended to be or not, that's what it's turned into. So you get you know a bunch of Uber drivers around. Everyone's just like chilling, doing whatever. Uh, and, and that's what this place has turned into. And look, everyone's got a charge. That's awesome. I just wish Uber would put in a hub for Uber drivers. And taxi company could put in a hub for their own cars. Revel did it. They, there's a Model Y taxi service or even Model 3 taxi service called Revel and they've built their own charging hubs for their own cars and then opened them up to the public, but they're designed to be rideshare charging hubs. So we've got the Taycan over here with Drew. Hello. Hey. So we did not charge very high power. We're just, uh, we happen to arrive pretty high state of charge. We just were in the area and we decided to come by here and film a video but i want to talk about the equipment so the first thing is first is what are we plugging the car into this is the dispenser so if you come over here timon you can see here that it's the name of this is shenzhen auto electric power plant company limited that brings confidence to the table <laughs> okay but look hey not to knock it it's, it sounds good let's let's look at more uh, of the data so this is the electric vehicle charging system equipment and they have a they need a 10 amp feed to run this. They have a 500 amp DC input and output to the car and it's CCS1. So when Gravity launched, they claim it was a 500 kilowatt charging station. Is it? Could you actually get 500 kilowatts from this charger? Certainly no car today could do it. Uh, and I'm not talking about from a 
um, you know, a, a total power level, but just even if you could have a car that could do 500 kilowatts, it's unlikely you would be able to hit it on these because of the 500 amp limit on the current. That's what these cables are rated for. Most CCS connectors typically don't go above 500 amps, and it's possible they would push it beyond 500 amps, but uh, we would need a Tesla to know. We would need a um, Volvo EX30 or Polestar 3. Those would be the only cars on the road that would request more than 500 amps out of this dispenser if the batteries were preconditioned and ready to rock. They go up to 1,000 volts. And so you could say 500 amps, 1,000 volts, 500 kilowatts for the branding. I would actually question whether or not the charging equipment could deliver 500 amps at 1,000 volts because most charging equipment can go up to 1,000 volts. Most charging equipment can get up to 500 amps. Most cannot do them at the same time. There's a crossover period at which you reach your total conversion power, and then it has to start derating your current as the voltage goes up. What I, you know, what is feeding this dispenser are these cabinets right here, and they are branded gravity cabinets. And if you look here, you can kind of peek inside. It's a power cabinet uh, that I've never seen before. It's very bespoke or it's, um, you know, it could be from that same Shenzhen power company, limited company. And um, we need to look at, okay, each site is saying 500 kilowatt output. There are six 360 kilowatt cabinets. I know they're 360 kilowatt cabinets because that's what that is written on there. So I'm guessing they're all load shared, load managed, and then site distributed out to the individual hubs. But Timon, do you have your phone on you? Could I borrow your calculator? Thank you. What's the uh, magic number? Oh, it's open. Never mind. Calculator. We're going to do 360 times 6. So we have 2.16 megawatts, 2,160 kilowatts of total possible AC to DC conversion. And what I'm not sure is if they're broken up into port by 50 kilowatt chunks or 25 kilowatt chunks or, or what that um, spread can be. But there's 24 ports here. So let's just say we have a total convert, you know, maximum, if everyone's pulling full power, you could do 90 kilowatts per port. So if everyone's here ripping, which is unlikely because everyone's bringing BZ4Xs and Mach-E's that don't charge that well, it's not, it, in theory, would derate down to 90 kilowatts. Now, it's possible they have other power cabinets here for this hub, but I don't think so, Timon, because there's plenty of room left yeah, in here. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so this is what I've been really curious. Everyone just and this is what I think the industry needs to be careful of. Everyone heard Gravity's announcement, 500 kilowatt charging in New York City. It's going to be the biggest, craziest, best thing on the planet. No one ever thought to look deeper. I mean, there's a couple people we had questioning, you know, my nerd friends and I were like, oh, really, is there anything? In it's 500 amps, apparently. Like, that's the first time I've heard that. That's a big, like, kind of question mark. Um, and also, we're not sure of the power conversion and, and uh, power output split. And all I'm saying is, if you max out the site, you only get 90 kilowatts per port. That's what it'll come down to. Very similar to Tesla version three supercharging, where they claim 250 kilowatts, but you can hit a site level maximum, and then they do site level load management to bring you down. Hold on, here's this. We're here on a, what day is today? Wednesday. It's Wednesday, and it's, it's busy. So I don't, even with everyone plugged in, and then you're like, I want 500. It's not gonna happen, I think. With the BZ4X. Yeah, with the BZ4Xs, you have a chance, but I think <laughs> if everyone plugged in here with 50%, it wouldn't happen. Right. But I also also think that most people are plugging in at 80% and right. then just sitting till 100. Thank you, Timon. Here's your phone back. Uh, so then, okay, I, I'm the, I'll be the first one to call them out on the BS marketing of the 500 kilowatts. It's possible. I don't know. But it's not like exciting or hard to do that. Anyone can add power modules. There was a 750 kilowatt charger at new in Arizona that we already filmed. That was open to the public. I don't think it is now. I don't know what's going on with new. I got to call those guys and figure out if they're doing okay. Didn't sound good last I heard. Um, so then let's get back to glossing over the power systems. Putting in DC charging is um, no small feat. Oh, actually, Timon, there was one more thing they said about this hub that I'm just remembering. They said it required no grid upgrades. So they just found a place that had the power connection available or they did battery storage, but I'm not seeing any batteries. So as far as I can tell, like there's nothing magical. They were like, we don't need to upgrade the power. We put these things in here. Yeah, cool, but good branding. Everyone bought it. 
but I, this, they just put in DC chargers and wired them to the grid. So, okay, maybe they did a medium level transformer somewhere around here, like a medium voltage one, stepped it down to 480. It's possible. But, but as far as I can tell, there's nothing abnormal, unusual going on here that makes it this crazy, cool thing that should, people should invest in at the moment. And maybe there is more. I'd love to talk to the CEO. I'd love to talk to the guys here, mostly the engineers, and figure out what is the secret sauce. Because at the outside looking in, there's no secret sauce here. What is cool is the ability to provide a service to EV charging customers and to put in charging in new york city is no small task and to put in charging to especially 24 dc charging ports is no small task to hire 24-hour security is no small task so they deserve props and credit to the user experience side of things here i think considering new york's a really tough place somewhat dangerous place to charge at times this is a really nice safe well-lit monitored area that I would feel comfortable sending anyone to to come and get a charge. Um, with that said, I think the only thing left we need to do is to charge this one up to 100 and figure out how much it's going to cost us. We'll update with you with the pricing here at the end, but I think that's a pretty neat first look at the Gravity Charging Hub, something that really captured a lot of buzz in the media, and I'm not sure why, other than it's a really nice charging park in New York City. So let's go figure out how much this costs us. Suits. Bulletproof Burb Diesel. U.S. government. Very cool. We are now pulling out of the Gravity Charging Hub and I paid the man 59 cents per kilowatt hour, which is expensive, but also I would say, you know, they have a full-time attendant. They have service that are keeping the ports up. For example, they have two ports down right now and they're uh, going to be fixed here pretty soon. So, uh, Timon, what was your impression of the whole experience? I it was pretty cool, and I don't think that's very expensive, especially for being New York City itself. Um, but it was cool. True? Maybe. Yeah, awesome. great. I uh, want to take something that can, uh, you know, take full advantage of the, the 500 kilowatt, you know, capability. Uh, heck yeah. It's, uh, and you know, you need to be able to charge around here, so. A-OK -okay in my book. Yep, totally agree. Uh, the weird thing is they close at 11 p.m. I thought they were 24-7. Right. Uh, but they said they close at 11 p.m. and open at 8.30 a.m. That makes it a lot less useful. Yeah, uh, but... But probably for safety reasons. Yeah, exactly. So a uh, couple points talking to the guys in there. They were like, we want to A, be open 24-7 and B, less BZ4Xs. To everyone, all the attendants hate the VZ4X, <laughs> which it's such a trash car for its charging performance. So thank you guys for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video, a quick tour of the Gravity Charging Hub in Manhattan. A really fun trip, a really cool experience, and I'm glad we had the chance to check it out. See you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.